I plan each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and the more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times. There's a new book about the life of Frank Sinatra by someone who, know, who knew him best. Tony Openizano was one of Sinatra's best friends and his manager. His book is called Sinatra and Me in the Wee Small Hours. And Tony joins us live with us this morning right now. Good morning. Hi, how are you? We're doing great. Appreciate your time. Where are you uh, talking to us from? Los Angeles. Fantastic. Well, we're happy to have you here. So this book details hundreds of conversations that you had with Mr. Sinatra over a six-year period of time. Actually, it goes back further than that. We, uh, we became friends thanks to Jilly Rizzo back in 1972 when I was all of 21 years old. Uh, and we developed a friendship starting in the mid-80s uh, after I gave up my performing career and started producing television and was doing a lot of things with Jilly. And Jilly was like the brother that Frank never had, as you probably already know. And so me spending more time down in the desert with Jilly, I was spending more time by osmosis with Frank as well. Uh, it intensified the last six years of his life after Jilly passed away because Frank said, basically, we basically lost one of the best friends we will ever have. And maybe we could uh, spend more time doing things together if you could see your way clear, if you're not producing TV and stuff. And that's when I became his road manager and uh, literally toured the world with him. And we spent thousands of evenings just talking till the sun came up. There have been so many projects done on Frank Sinatra. Was there something that you felt was missing in, in the many things that had been done on his life? Well, the one thing that he regretted he never got around to doing uh, was actually doing a Broadway show. And uh, the only reason he didn't do it is that uh, unlike today, uh, back in the day when he was working, you had to commit to do a show for at least a year or two, as opposed to doing a three month run, which you're, an, you're able to do these days. Uh, that was one, professionally, it's one of the things he regretted he never got around to doing. Mm. So you also uh, write that you have untold stories of his childhood, parents, children, and wives. Uh, can you give us a few examples? Well, it's a, there's a story about uh, when he was walking home from school one day. Frank was very passionate about helping people and the underdog. And he was walking home from school with his cousin, who was like a sister to him, Margie. And there was a guy standing on the corner waiting for the light to change, and he had his dog on a leash. And I don't know what caused the guy to do it, but he lifted the dog up by the leash, was holding him off the ground, and was hitting him with the other end of the leash. And Frank walked up to the guy, even though he was about 15, tapped him on the shoulder. The guy turned around. Frank punched him in the mouth wow. and caused him to drop the dog. Mm. And um, he ended up in the police station doing that and got scolded by, uh, by the, the sergeant. But after the gentleman left, he, the sergeant reached down and he shook his hand. He says, try not to resort to fisticuffs. He says, but I appreciate what you did and keep it up. <laughs> well, how do you, describe to us what Frank Sinatra was like because you knew him on such a personal level. What, what kind of friend was he? He was the most dedicated, compassionate, giving, generous, great, had a great sense of humor. Um, he was a great father. His children, his whole world, as was his grandchildren. And um, even, even his wives, he stayed, in, he stayed friends with all of his wives. Uh, throughout his entire life. And um, as much as he loved Barbara, uh, he was very dedicated to Nancy Sr., the mother of his children. And I can give you a quick story about something he did for me. Uh, I was down in the desert with him and I got a call that my father was taken into the hospital and I was in a kind of a down mood. And he was trying to cheer me up all night long. And after Barbara went to sleep, we were sitting in the den having a drink, watching TV. And I got up and went to the men's room. When I came back, I'm staring at the couch where we were sitting, and he had emptied his pack of cigarettes, and he put four cigarettes in each ear, three cigarettes in each nose and nostril, and about 12 across his mouth. 
and I'm looking at him and I started to laugh. And as he starts to talk to me, the cigarettes are falling all over the floor. <laughs> yeah. I said to him, you know, Frank, I've heard that there's a fine line between genius and insanity. You just erased it. He says, yeah, but I made you laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you would have these late night conversations with him, especially towards the end of his life, do you get the impression that, that he was happy and that he was able to enjoy his success? Absolutely. Uh, he was very happy. And I mean, he had his moments like we all do. And I, most of the time when we were talking, I got the impression that he was almost to an extent reconciling how he had led his life. Mm -hmm. Things that he uh, did and the things that he would never do the same way, things that he would never have changed how he did it. And he was, uh, he was very happy with his family, especially. Um, he, you know, he loved his children and his grandchildren and he loved his fan base and loved what he did for a living for his whole life. Mm. Really fascinating book here, a lot of uh, wonderful stories. Again, the book is called Sinatra and Me in the Wee Small Hours. It's available now. Tony, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for asking. Take care.